three, two, one. Peanut Gallery Gaming. Yay! Yay! Welcome to another episode of Peanut Gallery Gaming, where our opinions don't matter. This week, we're going to have a hall pass. New segment that we implemented last week, if you guys haven't caught that. So, uh, the hall pass is basically where we talk about games coming to Game Pass. Uh, And I believe also we're going to talk about games that are being introduced to the PlayStation Network, I believe it's called. Except none of us play PlayStation, so we're going to have to make it all up. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. (laughs) Dog shit (laughs) doo-doo. Yeah, who plays PlayStation these days? But now that games are becoming more cross-platform, we should definitely talk about that as well, because uh, having cross-platform in general is just great. Everybody chooses Absolutely. their own style, their own style of gaming they want to do, but still can play with anybody. Because that's how it should be anyway. It's like if Absolutely. I had a different phone company to you, like I could still ring you up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, or, or if you don't drive a Ford, if only Fords are allowed on the road, you know, make it redundant. And if you don't drive a so, Ford, you can still take your vehicle to the shop. Don't worry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to Hall Pass. Hey, you, kids, get the class. Aww. You over there. Do I have to? Where's your Hall Pass? Excuse me? Do you know who I am? A peanut dollar game, bitch. Fuck your Hall Pass. Uh, Hall Pass. So, what's coming to Hall Pass, or has come to uh, Game Pass this week? Uh, Marvel Avengers. I think they finally uh, released the whole game. Marvel Avengers is an action adventure co op gameplay with single player capability. I say that because most people are going to play it co op. Um, I'm gonna, I'm excited to try this game out. And now I know Stinky's played this game. Stinky, what can you shed some light on the, about this game? Eh. Eh? No. Uh, I did purchase this game when it first came out. Uh, like, this is actually one of the very few games I've bought on disc in probably the last three years. Now, I bought it on disc, having present on you, I could take it back if I didn't like it. <laughs> Please take and it I, back. And I took it back. But uh also saying that too, I'm an extreme Marvel nerd and these kind of games are the kind of games that I play the most. You know, like just as in just you know, like gear based RPGs, you know. Um so the game does have its uh pretty good actual single player missions campaigns where it sort of, you know, runs you through with new characters and all that sort of stuff and abilities. But um and I never actually played the multiplayer with friends. It was always with randoms. So, you know, like, if we play together, you know, I'm sure we can just make up our own fun and pretend to be Captain Planet and Powdered Toast Man and whatever else. But, um, yeah. you know, it, it's just your typical, you know, like, looter shooter type game, you know, but, like, kind of... But there's a lot of things that really annoyed me about it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you know, just like I say, though, playing it together with friends will be a lot better than me playing it with randoms. But some of the things that I... Don't like about it is is that and I understand it from a comic book canon point of view, but you can't have two of the same characters in the game, you know. So like, and each character levels up independently. So if I was playing Hulk, and then if you were playing Hulk, we can't play together. You've got to be somebody else, or I've got to be somebody else, you know. Like so, and because each character levels up independently, you know, it's sort of cuts that down by so much or you can imagine now i've never played any of the, any of the dlcs on this game either but you can imagine if they bring out a dlc oh here's black panther obviously everybody with that dlc wants to play black panther they all go into oh, and yeah. find a multiplayer game no one can find a multiplayer game because everyone's trying to be the new character to me that's a major flaw so yeah, but you know, at the same time you can't have like 20 hawks running around no, nah, well, why not? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess yeah, so. Like, like, <laughs> I mean, like, uh, like, like if if that would make the user base 
more able to play with everybody, why not? Like, I understand it from a comic book canon point of view, but just from a player point of view and just having fun, I don't see why not. And another thing that I really didn't like about it is, uh, you know, it, it's a loot-based game, you know, so you might, you know, if you're playing Captain America, you know, you might find a new helmet or a new shield or whatever, and part of those games is, like, you equip your new stuff, you equip a new shield, your shield looks different. In this game, it doesn't. Uh, you could have 50 different shields, and all those shields will look the same. Yeah. Uh, you can actually change your overall character skin you know, to look like, 1950s Captain America or a different version of a Captain America but if you change your shield or your helmet or whatever it's always just static so kind of you know you know, and like part of these games you know Borderlands or Division or Destiny or you know just whatever you know like as you're leveling up you know you change your helmet your helmet looks different you change your body yeah. armor your body armor looks different so kind of like to me that's a flaw as well okay. yeah but, um, I think a game know. is a little more satisfying when you can see your character's equipment upgrades. Yeah. And, um, and like, half the time, like, you know, like, you're leveling up, and just because you're throwing on all mishmash gear, you know, like, you just look like a clown threw up all over you. Yeah. You know? So, you know, like you just look absolutely disgusting, and even though your stats are cool, your guy just looks terrible. And then when you get to the end game, you almost start making a fashion out of it, you know? You know, like, you you know, part of your game plan is just to look good. But, yeah, you know, the, the game is, like, very much of, like, a Destiny sort of thing, you know. You go into strike-based levels, you know. You run around, you do a couple okay, of yeah. little things and whatever else. But And the is superheroes are cool. Aspect? Yeah, the superheroes are cool, but I wish that they felt more super. You know, like... Maybe, was there... So if you, <laughs> like, Superman. You no, know, like, if you're playing as Hulk... No, 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 no. Thank God this is Marvel, not not DC. <laughs> but um, you know, if you're playing Hulk, you know, I should just be able to one shot a dude just by smacking him in the mouth. But no, like you know, Hulk might take three hits to kill the guy, where Black Widow might take four or five hits. Like there's not, you know, you don't feel like the Hulk, or you know, if if Thor cranks a dude in the face with his hammer, they should be done. You know, like that's it. But no, it's kind of you know, it's a little bit more grindy than that. Yeah. But I think playing it with friends is the thing. And I almost half feel as though this is the last ditch effort for this game because I know it never really took off just because of those couple of flaws, you know, that I mentioned about not being able to play the same characters and the whole, you know, just cosmetics and all that sort of stuff. So I think they threw it on Game Pass thinking, oh, let's hope people play this game, otherwise it's going to shut it down. It's over, yeah, maybe. So you said you can't, play everybody can't be hulk you know whatever everybody's got to be a different superhero and that's probably for like lore reasons i think is what what you said right and maybe that's true uh is there some some possibility that maybe you know if there were 20 hulks or whatever it would just break the game like it would be too overpowered is that maybe why i don't think so um i never played to nowhere near that extent to see what the actual end game is, you know, like, and how powerful you guys get, but I don't think it would. No, oh, okay. Um, I think it would be fun know, to like, see. <laughs> it was... it, it's just, like, you know, bad that, say, like, if we were just playing independently, you know, like, and then I had a max level character and you had a max level character, then we're both, you know, and they both just happen to be the same guy. We can't play those two anything, guys together, you know. so I, either I've got to, we both start in you, or I bring my super high level character back to your game, and then, you know, because you can't join my game, because you just get one shot by everything, and yeah. so yeah, you know, like, I don't see the I don't see the harm in why you can't go in there with f- fucking six Captain Americas, or whatever it might be, I think that would no, just be kind of fun, you know? That's fair. Add some comedic relief. Yeah, it'd just be like, you know, I don't know. Okay, so I'm kind of excited to try this game out at least. As you, like you said, playing with friends is a lot better than playing with randoms. Yeah, we'll just play our own. We'll, we'll, we'll make up our own stories as we play along like we always do. Exactly. Uh, another game that's coming out, or came out, I should say, is Unsighted. Another action-adventure game. Uh, so this one looks pretty exciting to me. Not exciting. I'm definitely going to try it out. It kind of has that old school 2D side scroller kind of up around kind of kind of feels like uh oh god that uh, mega man feel to it oh when i watched the the trailer for it so this one looks pretty good 
basically this girl w- wakes up to a world ruin uh, world in ruin after after a war with the humans against robots it looks like oh kind of sci-fi definitely has a Mega Man feel to it yeah I'm watching the little trailer right now and the graphics look they look pretty good but they're like that old school almost like Super Nintendo 16 bit yeah yeah Another game that has currently come out is Astria Ascending. Oh, I want to play that one. Oh, that game there looks interesting. Yeah, it's a role-playing game. Uh, to explore a vast and beautiful world of Orkhan. Visit five different cities populated with unique creatures and solve more than 20 dangerous dungeons. It kind of looks like uh, old-school Final Fantasy turn-based uh, attack system. I like the graphics in that game. Oh, they, they look pretty flashy. <laughs> I, <laughs> I like the graphics too. It's uh, it does kind of look like Final Fantasy style battle. With uh, uh, it's definitely turn based. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Uh, another one that I'm kind of surprised to see on Game Pass so soon is Scarlet Nexus. I believe this game came just got released. A uh, few, few months, like maybe a month ago, up to half uh, ago. It's, on. it's definitely this year, yeah. And I, um, yeah. I think that's a game that I guess never really sold. I guess, like even though it kind of looks interesting, so they threw it on there. Maybe it's a like last if Dick Shefford as well. Yeah, be, because I remember I was talking to a guy at my old work, and he was all excited for the Scarlet Nexus, and I think he was playing it when it first came out, just because he. He likes these kind of action adventure games with the story, and it kind of looks like anime, right? And yeah, uh, it's sort of Devil May Cry style combat. Yeah, and he was all excited for it, and I thought it was a big title release. I think it was a because I I saw it everywhere. Everywhere's like Scarlet Nexus is coming out, and to see I don't know if Microsoft bought it or what, but yeah, I'm ex- surprised to see it so soon on Game Pass being released there uh, next is Mighty Goose sequel to uh, Mighty Ducks yeah oh, it's not, of, but it would be cool if it was I'm kind of interested in this one this one's an action adventure uh, assume a role of a Mighty Goose and bring the fight to the Void King this galaxy conquering monarch commands a vast army of minions and mechanic, uh, mechanicized Monsters. Oh, that's, that word's hard to say. <laughs> Dealing with these baddie means traveling to distant worlds and facing all kinds of dangers. But not to worry. This is no problem for the legendary Mighty Goose. It looks like a Contra style game. Like side yeah. scroll or shoot a bullet hell type thing. Yeah. This one looks good. This one looks up right up, up Bardo's alley. For sure. So the goose is on like a fucking motorized unicycle in the one part of the trailer <laughs> <laughs> looks like he is yeah. yeah oh and he's in like a tank mech thing in the other yeah that looks pretty cool actually yeah Not, it wouldn't be so my style fun. of like game that i prefer but it looks like it's really well done it looks like a cuphead yeah I remember what cuphead yeah yeah a cuphead or a metal slug or something along those lines Break your um, finger pressing B button. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Uh, has anybody else been playing uh, any Game Pass games that they want to bring up that they're really enjoying currently? Uh, yeah. There is one here that I've downloaded, but I haven't played it yet. Uh, okay. Phoenix Point. Okay. Which is like an XCOM style game. I believe it's made by the one of the original dudes from the original XCOM franchise, and he just went off and made his own company, and he made this game Phoenix Point. So I'm interested to try that because I enjoy those types of games. But okay. again, I've downloaded it, but I haven't played it yet. So I'll give that a go later. Interesting. I, I I've been been playing Hades forever. Sorry. No, it's fine. Would you say about Country Corner Donuts? Uh, the game. You're just a black hole. Oh. You just suck things up. Yeah. I played the crap uh, out of that game. That was fun. Yeah, 
It only takes like an hour, I think, to go through. It was a good little quick game. It was fun. Donut Country, I think it's called. In that same vein, actually, that Katamari Damacy, I've been playing that, and that's on Game Pass. And it's about rolling that little ball and just sucking things up with it. And I really enjoy that game. I would highly suggest anybody try it out. But you definitely got to use the controller for that. Uh, the two sticks are used to, like, move either direction, I guess. You got to use them. Oh, they kind of control your legs like a skid steer. You know, you hold the one forward and the one back and you can, like, turn. <laughs> yeah. And that, uh, yeah. the way they tried to map that on the keyboard for, like, the PC version just doesn't work. Like, it's obviously a controller game. So, thank goodness I have a controller for my computer. Yeah. Or I, I downloaded would... that game after the last podcast when we were talking about that there. I said, okay, yeah, I watched a little bit of gameplay, so I might as well try it. And trying to figure out the controls, I don't know if it was just me, probably was, but uh, using WASD, and then you have to use IJKL. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> you know, pretend those are fucking joysticks, yeah. Yeah, and it was, you know, it wasn't super frustrating, but it definitely uh, declined my wanting to play the game. <laughs> oh, of course, man. Like, so yeah. when I, I played this game... 15 years ago it was on ps2 or something so it was always with the controller and it just felt yeah. intuitive and then when i reinstalled it there like a week or two ago on my pc for that nostalgia trip and i was trying to go through the little tutorial with the keyboard i was like man this sucks like this is nothing like i remember it yeah and, and then i was like oh maybe i need to use the controller and once i plugged in my controller i enjoyed it again I haven't made it too far, but uh, there's quite a few levels to go through in that game and a lot of variety of stuff to pick up. <laughs> I want you okay. to do a playthrough using a Dance Dance Revolution mat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you and your friend have to do it. Two people. One gets one map, one gets the other. Yes. Yeah, well, that's the way it would have to work. I got no friends and I got no dance mat, so <laughs> it's going to be a, be a tough too. one. You, okay, you and, then I, <laughs> and I know Bardo has been talking about this game here, and recently you have also started playing this 80s. Yeah. Yeah. How are you enjoy, enjoying that? Me and Bardo talked about it briefly a week or two ago. Um, I think just yeah, after he had it. beaten it and I just starting it. Um, and yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm still not super far, I don't think, but. Uh, I've definitely made uh, a lot of progress. I beat the first, yeah. the first four sort of floors or worlds or whatever, and I made and it. Nice to the yeah, sorry. beating them, they give you the. It's nice because beating them give you those that elixir, the elixir. So it helps progress you. So it is just a bunch of very quick yeah. grind runs, but then you get there and. That's yeah, favorite. and I really like uh, so. Half of the game is about dying and coming back stronger. Um, so it can be really grindy to do the same thing over and over again. But inside of every run you make, you get these different power-ups called boons, and they change the abilities your character has in interesting ways. And you can get a whole bunch of them and then level them up throughout the course of the run. And sometimes you get this combination of boons that work really well together so instead of like attacking normally, you can just hold your attack button and he does like a rapid fire nonstop attack. And you can get another boon that like increases your attack speed so that goes even faster. And then you like end up stun locking all the enemies and all kinds of shit. Okay, you can get some overpowered runs. I, yeah. I, I beat that game many times. And there were runs where um I at the end of the game, when you kind of get there, there's no spoilers, but um, you'll definitely know. So you have an opportunity to just completely obliterate the game or be like, ah, it could still be risky with what I got to do something. Yeah. But there are some very fun combinations when piecing together weapons. Yeah. And so then there's there's one, two, there's like seven different weapons, at least that I know of that you unlock and then you can upgrade 
eventually um uh, over the course of several runs you get these items that'll upgrade your weapons and the weapons uh you can't change them in the middle of a run but you can change them in between when you're when you're dead and uh, yeah. there's a sword and a pike and uh a shield weapon and a bow and a fucking gun and some other shit that I don't remember. Black claws. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like claws. and yeah. those uh, those gloves, the punching gloves. Minecraft dungeons and the punching gloves. Mm. What the fuck those? Yeah, those. Okay. What's your favorite so weapon? So it's far, got, my favorite is yeah. the sword. No, I definitely really. Yeah, yeah. I started with the sword because it's the first one. And I got yeah. used to it. And then I was like trying out the other weapons against that skeleton in the in that in the weapon rooms or whatever. And I was just eh, you know what? I kinda like the sword. So I'm just sticking with it. Even though it might not be the most flashy or fun. Either way. Was, what was I, your I, favorite? I, the gun. The, the oh, gun. okay. It's yeah. Here to start, but the gun is the most overpowered weapon in that game. It's you could confidently run through pretty much every run and beat the game. Once you have upgraded some of your perks, um, there's a couple boons and the Y move on that gun that make you an unstoppable force with like very basic boon requirement. It, yeah, the gun seemed really cool, and I'll probably give it a try. The the fact that you had to reload it kind of took me by surprise. Well, I mean, when you upgrade that gun, you, you don't look for attack boons. You look for boons that increase, uh, like, be the Y damage or whatever it is on your keyboard. I don't know mount. what Y is, yeah. Um, it, the special attack. Oh, okay. You don't go for your regular attack when using the gun. You go for boons for the special, and you're you're good. You, you'll beat it pretty much every playthrough. Okay, so I know also Hoagie's been playing a game, uh, one that he's played in the past, and uh, Fallout 76, I think he's playing, and it's on a game pass now? Yes. And you said you're quite enjoying it now, because you said you're subscribed? Yeah, I got their little monthly subscription thing which lets you have like private servers or you can build your own world with custom settings like infinite ammo and more loot harder enemies stuff like that i mean you can do a lot of stuff okay so That's i guess fun. it has its perks right and then i know so if i were to download fallout 76 you can join i can on you on you your per- to have it, yeah. okay that's not bad either Definitely playing with your friends does have its bonuses there too, probably. Yeah, you always. get more XP and stuff like that for playing with friends and stuff. Yeah. That's good. That's okay, let's take a minute to hear a word from our sponsor. Let's move over to horror games. <laughs> now, I know a lot of you, I know Bardo loves playing his horror games, and I know. I do. Ogie's played quite a few, and I've played a couple. And I know Uncle Blobby has an addiction to horror games or horror movies. Sorry, yeah. I'm horror surprised. Movies, I mean, uh, so I, I would really like horror games too. For the most part, I just haven't played that many. So I look forward to hearing yeah. about them. Okay. When I bring up horror games, uh, the definition would be, you know, Made of Decay is a horror game. Uh, obviously, Phasmophobia, which we have Let's Plays on our YouTube channel. Make sure you check those out. Uh, Phasmophobia, a ghost hunting game, definitely a horror game. Uh, Outlast, anything zombie shooter, anything that has a jump scare, really. So, one that's played probably the most horror games here would say would be Bardo. So why don't you bring up what do you, what do you like so much about playing these horror games? 
I go, oh, absolutely last. nothing. <laughs> like, they <laughs> terrified the shit out of you, and you know it's going to happen. <laughs> and you just got to play it, and it's, it fucking sucks. But it's usually really enjoyable. Now, I have a VR. Ooh, that sounds terrifying. Uh-uh. <laughs> I want to do some Let's Plays with us playing some horror games in VR, but I got to get that set up. That's a month or two down the road where I got a, got a spot downstairs where I'm going to make into a VR room kind of esque. Uh, so, what horror? You've played Outlast. Who here has played yeah. Outlast? Because I know that's terrifying. Well, uh, uh, that I have a little bit. Yeah. yeah I don't know I think how that long I spent in that game. There was a certain spot, and I was stuck between a staircase and a door inside, like, a pump station in the dark. And I was there for, like, half an hour in real time. I can't do it. I could hear the guy and everything. Oh, it was fucking terrifying. Another More game that's there. is a horror game which I played is Little Nightmares. Uh, has anybody else played that? It's a side scroller uh, where you're a tiny little uh, kid and you're running through a ship. The first ones you're running through a ship. And basically, you're running through and you can't be spotted by these uh, evil, I don't know, creatures. Bad people that want to eat you. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, you're running away from being eaten alive and cooked. And so, it's it's pretty good. It's got some really creepy aspects to it that really give you the jitters. Uh, I know another one that we've played. Uh, Wait, and and spoilers. Um, I spoil that game. And if you eat people, you're also the little character. That's what makes really fucked up. Uh-huh. Super Another messed up. good scary game that has some good jump scares would be The Evil Within. I played that one. Is it good? The I Evil s- Within. Yeah, it, had, yeah. it has its moments. It's different. It's not... There are a lot of like, like... They're not trying there's to... Like, combat. There's a decent amount yeah. of combat in that game, I will say. But they, they have the jump scares it. and shit, too. This makes it different. Another game that we played quite a bit of, which is also on Game Pass, is Dead by Daylight. Where you no get to play as your favorite horror killer. And oh, yeah. You basically run around and you get the heartbeat going in your headset. And it just starts getting your blood going. Yeah, you're sitting on a generator, zoned in, focused, not paying attention. And some dude sneaks up behind you and smacks you in the back of the head, and you jump and throw your controller. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> I, I made a guy dislocate his finger in that game. Yeah, absolutely. I thought we were playing together, and then he went. He's like, I have to go to the hospital. I'll be right back. And I got his finger popped snuck back up in. On <laughs> I remember that. Um, uh, what else is here? The forest. I've watched a lot of gameplay on that. That's where you're, you're in a plane crash. And I, I do want to play this one here. I know this one here, I haven't played a bunch of horror games, but I have horror games I want to play. And so this one here, The Forest, if anybody doesn't know, you survived this plane crash on the island, and you're trying to find the rest of the survivors on the plane crash, but you crash land on an island full of cannibals. And you gotta cut down trees and you start making your own little unity. And That's you gotta make these... as kids, right? <laughs> like who? young kids. Is that the one? No. No, this one I don't think that's a bug. Kid. Oh yeah, that's um I have no idea. Lord of the flies. <laughs> well no, there's a horror <laughs> game out there where you crash land from a plane. Yeah. But your 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 characters are kids. It's multiplayer, and like there's cannibals on the island that are trying to eat you, and some weird mutated cannibal shit going on. <laughs> and it's got a lot of jump scares and stuff in it because you go down in caves to explore because there's kind of like a storyline to it. Yeah, it could be it. Yeah, the forest. But I don't think you're a kid. I think you're a dad trying to find your kid. 
in the forest. Anyways, I can look it up here. But anyways, uh, this Dying Light. I played a lot of that game. That game is considered a horror game probably because it's got zombies in it, and some points are, you know, creep. I guess got some creep factor to it. Uh, Resident Evil. I don't know. Resident Evil 4 is getting remade for your VR. I did see a Ooh. thing about that. Really? That 4? That would be fun. For VR, yeah. So we'll have to play some of that. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy, I know I can play that in VR. Yeah, there's a lot of games I want to I wanna try. Like, I'm not huge into horror. I don't watch a lot of horror movies. I watched one the other night. Yeah. You guys are more adventurous. I watched that uh, malignant movie that's on HBO, which it wasn't like a skid. It's it, they 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 portray it as a scary movie, but it's it's not. Yeah. Okay. It was weird though. It's a good watch. Like the Alan Tucker versus Evil. Oh, that is like that is a good movie. <laughs> I saw they're making a Chuck no, TV it, it, it's it's got like it'll keep you interested like the twist at the end me and Jess both had our theories and it turns out we were both right oh at the really same time. and just it was it, it's weird but the ending yeah it's it's different okay so I got a question for Uncle Blobby here. so being such a horror movie fan what do you want to see in a horror game uh, that's a good question, actually. Um, I couldn't really say off the top of my head, except that I would like, you know, something that did it a little bit different. Because you got games with zombies, and you got ghosts and shit and phasmophobia. You got whatever in the forest, cannibals, and probably monsters and wildlife and whatever. Yeah. All of these things are sort of like, of course, you know, they're scary to people. Zombies are scary. Ghosts are scary or whatever. I would like to see a game that, you know, maybe made you have those jump scares and that apprehensive, like, suspenseful thing where Barto said he was stuck between the door and the stairs for like half an hour. Somehow did that yeah, with like say outlast. unconventional terror things. You know, yeah. I don't know what that would mean, but something that you're not normally like associating with horror movies. I would like that. And second of all, um, I'm also a big fan of like B horror movies and Some ones that are like in- intentionally bad almost, and they like try to be bad to the point of being good. Shock Nida. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much every B-rated shark movie. Giant shark versus giant auto octopus. So I, I'd also take a game that, that did that spin on the horror game genre. That's so bad it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Kinda. That that would be my two fun to see things. Okay. That's an interesting way of thinking about it for sure. I saw Outlast. actually there was a game I, I will have to play out last, I guess. It's been mentioned now several times. <laughs> No, that game will shit your pants. Is it on scary. Game Pass? I think Outlast 2 is. It probably is. I think it's Outlast. I'm vetting the day to play number two. I know it used to be. Okay, that's where I downloaded it and played it. Yeah, Outlast 2 is on Game Pass. Yeah, I see that right now. Yeah, there's a lot of. Oh, it looks. Games. Yeah, the little screenshots make it look scary. <laughs> That in VR would you shit your pants for? Oh sure. yeah, yeah, that sucked. <laughs> so how did you play naked? Be... <laughs> Which? That's why you play naked. <laughs> so when you shit your pants, it doesn't <laughs> you got no pants? <laughs> so you don't want to slip on it on the floor. You put a top there. <laughs> No, how did okay. you said you got this VR, but it's going to be a couple months before you set it up. Hey, so um, I really want to see some of those Let's Plays where you're in VR, and hopefully by then you could have like a webcam as well that records your absolutely reaction. I agree. Yeah, because when I play Phasmophobia, like when, when Bardo says he was stuck in a corner, uh, shit like that freaks me out. <laughs> 
<laughs> when Hoagie's like, we're playing with like Hoagie or whatever, and Hoagie's like, okay, it's your turn to go in by yourself. And you're like, nope. <laughs> so I'll, I'll reluctantly walk in. And I think there's a post I posted on our uh, TikTok. And uh, it's me going in. And he had died. Oh, he got disconnected. Is what had happened. And he's like, you're all by yourself. I said, great. Like, just great. This is exactly what I needed. <laughs> and I walked into the garage of the house. I walked back. I'm like, okay, well, I need to figure out what's going on. And as I was getting to the, the kitchen, all of a sudden, my, my, my batteries on my flashlight start to drain. And I'm like, okay, she's hunting. So she's coming to kill me. So I hide behind this door. I go dead silent and I'm freaking out on inside. And she's hunting and she's hunting. She's hunting. She's done. Okay, I'm out. I am no longer staying here. <laughs> and just like, just, I guess what really creeps me out is that you're in a dark room. And you hear the la, 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 la in the background. You know, you all creepy. You hear the footsteps and you know she's after you. You know the entity is coming for you. And she's looking for you. And, you know, my house was dark. It was nighttime. No one else is around me. I have these computer screens that are on on my face. And that's it. And I guess just the ambiance just freaks me out. Because I guess that's what the game's meant for, right? Yeah. The game is meant to immerse you and get you into that state of mind of where this is freaky deaky Dutch. Okay, so in another wonderful horror game that you need to play is a horror game called Layers of Fear. Okay. That is a wonderful horror game for people who actually like horror games. It will it'll fuck with you. <laughs> play that one in VR. <laughs> You're, you're gonna have to play some of VR too. I'll record you playing some VR stuff because I know there's only three of us that really have good computers. So if we can get some more, well, I guess we'll do some crossplay. But I, I'm pretty sure some some of our fans would like to see you also playing in VR. Hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've already beaten these games. I I don't think you can really replay them in the sense because you go through them uh, once and it's kind of ruined. Yeah. Like this is like you're gonna go through this game once and it's gonna fuck with you. And next time you're like, you probably have it, but you'll be a little less. It's not the same. Okay. It wouldn't. It wouldn't give you the same appeal. Just that my personal opinion. I don't. I've never replayed yeah, a horror then game. Then you kind of know. Then you kind of know what's gonna happen, and you know. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. I see why. I see why it loses its edge. Yeah, it does. Okay. Does anybody have anything else horror esque they want to bring up? Because I got another topic I want to bring up before we move on to the next was, one. Limbo was a weird one, but we can move on. Well, I've never really played horror games that much. Only, well, see, because I don't really class Resident Evil as a horror game. You know, like it's sure You're it's got zombies mom. and monsters You're and whatever mom. else. And take take um, that back. <laughs> oh, was, yeah, uh, like, no. so even though this game isn't really a horror game, it is something that used to put me on edge. And that's uh, and it's more of the fear of unknown is more what I probably get freaked out by, I guess. So like if you're playing a Dark Souls game, as hard as fuck as it is, and you wander into a new area, you know that somewhere in that new area there's going to be something that's put there purposely to shank you but you don't know where it is you know kind of oh, yeah. so you know you just have the fear of the unknown you know like oh, oh there's a chest and it turns out to be a mimic chest and just kills you and shit like that like things like that sort of put it up put it up me but like I don't really get, go out of my way to play horror games I guess yeah not that I'm afraid of them I just uh, I find it say horror movies are like comedy movies they're either good or they're terrible so kind of like you know it's sort of the same thing I guess for when I look at the games and I've just never really gone out of my way to play too many but yeah the fear of the unknown in Dark Souls used to get to me every now and then where you've got to be super steady and you know something around that corner is just going to push you off the edge or a dragon's going to fly down out of the, off the swoop of a mountain and kill you or whatever it might be yeah I give you a jump scare yeah you know or just that? make you feel extremely ripped off Okay. On that same note, also not a horror game, 
but definitely known for some of that fear of the unknown, I think would be Escape from Tarkov. Yeah, the that only, game. The darker maps. <laughs> and like, you, you hear a guy's footsteps in that game, it's almost the same as like hearing them in Phasmophobia or whatever. Yeah. You, you don't really know what's coming or if they know you're there, or if they're coming for I've, you. I've turned a couple corners and got lit up and my mouse goes zigzagging across my desk and I just sit back and holy shit, what just happened and scared. And then my wife looks at me and is like, are you okay? <laughs> what just happened? Yeah, and cool. then probably half of the scare part of that game is also the fear of losing all your shit. Yeah. 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 That definitely makes you fills you with apple. Well, like when you're playing Minecraft and you're like, coming up behind you, you know it's a fucking creeper about to explode you. You know, like you're next to one of your chests, yeah. yeah. Oh, your chest fuck. and all its contents just blow. I blew up my bed. Now I've spawned somewhere. I don't know where the fuck I am. Yeah, I've, uh, you know, yeah. Just that little background noise, and you know that's going to kill you. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> And you've got enough time to go, <gasps> and then you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so moving from horror games, because I want to talk about this briefly before we get on to our next segment, is New World, Amazon's New World. Oh, lordy. Okay, so there's a lot of controversy on it right now. Uh, a lot of people are saying that if you're not a real gamer and you only coming on, you only got time for one hour a day, don't even bother coming on. Because there's no catch up kind of uh, al- algorithm in it. If you, you'll get left behind in the dust if you're not on 10 hours a day. Some of the, this is what the streamers are saying. You're going to have to dedicate a lot of time, kind of like how when WoW first dropped out. Uh, yeah. You no. Know, <laughs> apparently it's so, good though, but the wait times are atrocious to even get into the game. Yeah, I saw that TikTok or whatever you posted of the guy who waited like supposedly 24 hours and then he was finally like position 20 in the queue or something. Yeah, and, and then, then didn't the game like, yeah, crashed or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I think this is going to be an interesting game. I kind of want to see how it unfolds and, and what they're going to put into it. But Amazon coming <laughs> out with a game, that's crazy. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff Bezos. I got two comments on. that I want to make about that. Well, actually, three. So the first is like you're all these people are saying if you don't dedicate ten hours to this game, like you might as well just not even try. You're gonna yeah. be so far behind. You know, sucks that you have a job in a real life and you play other games. <laughs> it's not for you. <laughs> you know what? Maybe not. Maybe I won't get to the level that fucking streamer Bob gets to, but I could still probably enjoy the game on my own pace. You know, even if yeah. I get left behind by these cutting edge gamers who spend all their time playing, That's all I they do probably That's still cool. enjoy the game. Second, your own pace. Fuck, I forget what the second thing was, but the third thing was I wanted to say I watched a bunch of trailers for it that night when you mentioned it. Yeah. Like five, I think, in a row on YouTube. And it looked really impressive overall, but I realized after watching it that none of the trailers showed any gameplay whatsoever. I think it was all just like cinematics. Which always look fairly impressive you know they're made to look like a movie or whatever but i didn't see any of like how the game actually plays and that's uh that's a sort of a pet peeve of mine like if i watch a trailer i want to see what it's like to actually kind of play the game not just watch the movies that they built into the game yeah so fortunately i've seen a little bit of the gameplay the gameplay looks Okay, so it's not like the best or anything. It's better than what RuneScape was. But it's not like super out there, extra awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I can appreciate that. I'd say it's on par of what WoW would be. Right? Okay. It's not spectacular, but it's not the worst. I'd say um, even, you know, like if you're 
on two, you know, on two sides of the fence to whether you play it or not, I'd say give it a couple of months and see. Because yeah. um, MMOs, uh, uh, I guess like they're kind of like the looter shooter style, you know, like loot based games too. You know, like we're kind of because there's such a time investment needed into that game. Only very few of those types of games can actually exist with a healthy player base. You know? Yeah. Um, and I kind of feel as though that's probably one of the main reasons why World of Warcraft is still a thing, you know, lo- you know, like, because, you know, like, because people who play, say, World of Warcraft, they'll go and jump onto all the new MMOs and they'll play them for a little bit, but then they'll go back to WoW because they probably, you know, it, it'd be very similar to the lads who I know who play Destiny just flood out, you know, like, kind of like, they're like, well, we'll go and play this one here for a little bit, but we've already invested 600 plus hours into this game. We may as well go back to that. You know, yeah. kind of thing. So, you know, because there is such a heavy, heavy time investment into games yeah. like that. A huge, almost becomes a lifestyle. Come home from work. If you, it's more of like, yeah, if you're based and your work is streaming, your work is playing video games and posting, and you don't have nothing else to do, like no commitments, then maybe. This is the game for you. <laughs> oh no, you know, yeah. Oh, you know, like it's just more, you know, like like just give it six or eight months and see if everyone goes back to that Final Fantasy fourteen or whatever it is. Although, or they go back to WoW, you know, like, and then the player base just sort of falls off. You know, kind of just give it a bit of time, see if people stick around. Exactly. If it's if it, so. Uh, yeah, I well, think that's a really good point about how the. Because of such a large in t- time investment involved, the player base is already like attached to something out there that exists, and the new thing that like might come along to replace that is going to have to really sort of tickle their fancy. You know, it's going to have to fix their WoW fix and then be something better because they've already got six hundred hours into WoW. So if it's like so it's like, oh, it's as good as WoW, but it's not really anything great. Then why am I going to keep playing it when I've already yeah. it's like, uh, uh, 600 they have hours over the WoW? It'd be like 6,000 uh, hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, it'd be closer to uh, years than WoW. 600 days. They need to have like a, a super strong <laughs> end game. You know, like otherwise you go, oh, sweet, now I'm max level. Now what do I do? You know? Yeah. But kind of that's where WoW is still so strong because it's been out for. God knows how many gears. You know, it's got eight years worth of end game in it. You know, so kind of it's it boils down to that too. You know, like you know, like because uh, oh sweet, I'm max level and now what? And that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to Hotted's theoretical question of the week. It's time for. Hardest theoretical questions of the week. Where I ask our listeners and ask these guys around the table uh, a question. And if you post on our social media, we will read your answer on the podcast. So this week I asked if you level up any aspect of yourself, i.e. strength, intelligence, charisma, etc., you had to decrease an aspect of yourself at the same amount what aspect would you increase and which one would you decrease now is there anybody that wants to go first what do you think you need to okay okay more intelligence more intelligence (laughs) just 100% intelligence maybe a little bit of dexterity zero to strengths because being smart pays way more than being strong. Okay, so being smart, you can make yourself an exoskeleton suit. Be strong. Fuck yeah. I, I could do anything. I could be a sorcerer. You could be. <laughs> I, I've learned time and physics and space, and I know how to move, move, move objects with giant boulders into people. Or out of my way. Hard. You know, there's traffic. You could just be like, I'll move these cars now. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. So uh, if intelligence your dexterity is terrible and you can't use a clutch. You can't drive a stick yeah. because your dexterity is <laughs> terrible. 
But at least I could have a, a, like 50% of dexterity because I'll just take zero strength. That won't help me make money. I'd be so good at poker. I'd be banned from all casinos. This poor little guy can't even open up a can of Coke because he's got zero. <laughs> yeah. He'll be able to pay Mr. somebody to do it. He'd be like Mr. Burns when he's trying to open a fortune cookie yes. and crack it. And Smithers is like, oh, good crackster. <laughs> Shut up, you go ahead. That was my finger. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> that's my answer. Okay. That's interesting. That's kind of funny. Uh, who wants to go next? How about uh, Ogie? If he's there. Ogie, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, I don't know if I change anything. No? I don't think I would. You don't want more strength? You don't want less intelligence? No. No? I don't. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to lower another stat to raise one. Okay. It's one of those things when you're, you're smart enough to get done what you need done, you're strong enough to get done what you need done, you have the dexterity to get done what you need done. Uh-huh. Why change it? Not yet. So I don't think okay. I change anything. So, that's a fair answer. In the... Okay, who's next? I'll go. Mine is the same as Sparto. I would like to increase my intelligence. And I would probably also lower my strength, maybe. Or, say, my mana. If I could lower my mana. I don't need my mana. Yeah. What is is mana? Mana is like your... If you're a wizard, Our mana name. is the juice that you use to cast spells oh, sometimes. Rather than HP. Yeah. Yeah. Your elixir. Yeah. yeah, yeah. MP, I get that. Yeah, sure. So I'd either reduce strength some or that some, maybe, because I want my intelligence not to become a wizard who casts spells eventually, but I want my intelligence higher to learn how to be a computer programmer faster so that I can get a better job faster. And then and video games, make that video games like, and work like remotely Musk. from home. Nice. Yeah, I don't think I'd go as far as that Elon stage. Musk. He's already invented. I would all invent a new computer software. <laughs> you can take you could, PayPal a new app for crying out loud. Windows 11. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of Apple computers, I'll make orange computers. Something. That's what I want to do. So I, if that would speed me up getting there, that's why I chose that. And I don't need super strength to be a computer programmer. I could be pretty frail. I think that fits the stereotype. Um, you can lower your stamina. I could lower my stamina. I don't that need a lot of stamina, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Thought about lowering well, you, my you would need health, charisma but I want to keep stuff. my health. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep my charisma speed. where it's at. What about movement speed? Like zero? I don't want to be able to take a shit. When I need to. <laughs> like a sloth. <laughs> but yeah, I could be mostly stationary. Yeah, but that, at that point, you have zero movement speed or one movement speed, and you could be in a like a motorized wheelchair. Like yeah, Stephen Hawking. I still like the ability to walk. You know, going down and upstairs is something I enjoy. As a but you'd be smart if you could build yourself legs to do it. I could, yeah. yeah, but I'm not. I'm not trying to raise my intelligence, you know, that high that I become Stephen Hawking. Okay, I still want to be a real person who can move around. <laughs> Okay. That's my story. I'll go go next. Um, I'd probably decrease intelligence, not by a whole lot, because I still need what I got. Because it's still (laughs) it's pretty low as it is. (laughs) I would increase uh, strength, and I would also decrease. Oh, you know what I do? Okay. Is my answer. A decrease strength, increase intelligence just enough, uh, lower my charisma down to like two because I just want to be monotoned and whatever. Just awkward. And then I'd increase movement speed. 
like as fast as he could fast yeah <laughs> almost flash like you know <laughs> just you know to move around fast <laughs> this, this is a great idea well, that's would what you, I would do. Would you still have to drive to work or would you be so fast you could just walk? I'd be so fast I would just walk there. And I'd be there in less time than it would take for me to drive there. Yeah. yeah. Can you still walk slow if you wanted to or is this a thing where it's like you're speed all or nothing. Just yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's all or nothing. Though. Well there's it's Brian in the grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> uh, Yes. Oh, it's all or nothing. There is no in between. It's a good so choice. that would be awkward. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, to keep it grounded in reality, I guess, without too much ridiculousness, uh, I wouldn't really want to, kind of like Hoagie, I guess, I wouldn't really want to drop any of my stats because they're pretty low as it is. But my eyesight's terrible. So I don't know what stat that would come under. I might raise that up a little bit. Uh-huh. I don't know what stat your eyesight would be because I've I've had glasses Perception. since I was fucking six. Yeah. So I'd She's probably raise that up a little bit. Uh, but then if you want to go off on a crazy tangent and just well, let's all run super speed if we got all max fucking speed. I suppose I'll put all of mine into my barter skill. Whoa. So I can. <laughs> so I can. Just sell stuff to shops for ridiculous money, you know? If that's okay, so then, then what would you decrease? Uh, well, in the reality version, not much, because my stats are pretty low as it is. <laughs> but you got to you gotta get the points from us elsewhere. Get your yeah. barter skill out. Uh, well, if we're going off on the, on the crazy-ass tangent, I guess, just put it all in the barter skill. Oh, look, like, like, give me a little bit of movement <laughs> speed, little, very little, drop almost everything down to five and put the rest in a barter, you know, so I can go and buy an apple from this shop for 50 cents and sell it to this other shop for six bucks, you know, something stupid like that. Start playing the stock market. Yeah, the real life stock market. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'd have this little cool segue you'd move around on. That's, that's correct. <laughs> I, I have one of those anyway. No, no, I don't. <laughs> Hey, anybody else want to add anything in? Any honorable mentions or no? Yes, no, maybe. Don't think so. Okay, that'll well, do it for another episode of Peanut Gallery Gaming, where our opinions don't matter, but yours do. So make sure you reach out to us on our Facebook, Twitter, and join our Discord, where we're pretty active on there, and you can talk to us. And uh, make sure you reach out to us on our YouTube channel. Let us know what be games you want to Yeah, be our friends. <laughs> we'll be nice. The only one who bites is Bardo. So we're pretty nice. Uh, let us know what games you want us, want us to play in Let's Plays. And yeah. Okay. Bye for now. See you, See you later. Deuces. Bye. I didn't know how much you wanted me to read Doogie's thing, so I just kind of left it out. Oh, I didn't know he put something in there. He said he'd de- he increase his charisma and intelligence and decrease his dick size. <laughs> that wouldn't give me much <laughs> points to play with, though, because it's fucking not that big, is it? <laughs> we could have ribbed him on that. He said he'd rather out. be likable with a small dick than be an unlikable guy with a huge wiener. You should have told him he lost out on both of them. He's fucking... <laughs> Only got two points to work with? Yeah. One point per inch? <laughs> <laughs>